quarter. Put that down to a reasonable level and turn it off and start in. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to folks around the world. This is Martin Hubel, your host of the DB2 Night Show. And this is our 133rd show for uh, DB2 on System Z. With that in mind, our, our special guest today is Marcus Davidge, uh, uh, who is a lead product developer for BMC Software. He resides in uh, Wales, don't you, uh, Marcus? Yep, that's right. Yeah, uh, we were just commenting as we got going when we first met was, I think, in uh, the beautiful Grosvenor House in London, England, uh, back in 1988 when I was teaching courses for a small software vendor and I was responsible for uh, uh, doing a lot of teaching. The, the fun time back then was to learn DB2 and see the world is what my boss had told me and uh, sure enough that was true. Uh, uh, the UK was my first country outside of North America. Um, and from there, I've gone on to 33 or 32 countries doing DB2 work. So my my uh, first boss in the DB2 world uh, and as a vendor was uh, prophetically right. So, but uh, Marcus and I have kept in touch through the years and uh, we've, I guess, tracked each other's careers in various ways. And, and here we are doing a DB2 uh -huh. show together, which is great. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. Oh, it's great to have you here. All right, let me get the housekeeping out of the way because you're the main main event, not me. So let's move on and do that. As always, here's our social uh, media page, uh, Twitter, our hashtag of db 2 night Make sure you follow that. That'll tell you when the replay is available, and it'll also tell you I post on there uh, normally two days before a show just to remind you to sign up. And of course, you can always go to the homepage for the db 2 night show and sign up there as well. Our replays are on YouTube. I normally get the YouTube uh, replay done first because, well, it's easy to do. Um, the other stuff we do uh, uh, requires some uh, PHP and some uh, magic behind the scenes that is a little more tedious. Uh, we're talking state-of-the-art uh, 1980s web type stuff or 90s. I guess uh, HTML was more of a 1990s thing. And that's what I have to do to get the show uh, done afterwards, along with uploading files and stuff like that. So, uh, look, if you like YouTube, that's another thing you can use it for. Here's our famous disclaimer. And yes, again, I forgot to change the date to 2023. In fact, I'm going to change that right now so I don't have to remember to forget next week. <laughs> there we go. Now my life, my knife life is now complete. And uh, we record things, we make replays available, we respect people's copyrights. And other quick announcements. Here's our upcoming shows. I've done pretty well on getting the LDUW editions together. I've got a couple of people in mind for the other two shows that will not be hard to fill. Uh, we've got some uh, people that are, are uh, well respected that we'd like to bring back. On the Z side, I've got a bunch of ideas. I've got some requests out. I unfortunately don't have anything to report. It was a kind of a strange week here. We lost a day to, to uh, snow clearance and another couple of days for just feeling uh, under the weather. You could, I believe in Monty Python terms, we could call it the dreaded lurgy. But with that, we'll I'll have that filled in and we'll be announcing the February 24th show very soon. Um, as always, our founding sponsor of the DB2 Night Show is DBI Software, and we encourage you, if you're interested in improving your DB2 uh, LUW performance, and by the way, they also now do SQL Server, and uh, they've been successful at uh, uh, putting out their tools for SQL Server as well, if you're uh, in that distributed platform uh, world. And you can follow that information on their website, and if you watch a video, you get a, a gift, uh, gift card. Our winner last uh, uh, from last week's or last, yeah, it was last week is Sarah Hahn of uh, BMO Bank of Montreal up here in Canada, and she gets an Amazon gift certificate. Congratulations, Sarah! Now, um, and our sp sponsors are DBI and my, yours truly, Martin Hubel Consulting Inc. And uh, now we we only have one polling question for today. Uh, Marcus and I were kind of drawing a blank when we started to set up what the uh, 
other more um, other polling questions we can ask. So we'll just ask you the one: What are you currently running in the way of DB2, the newest uh, DB2Z version you have? I sometimes was giving people multiple choices here, but the reality is, if we just know the newest one you're working on, that'll be quite good enough. We're getting. 80% of our audiences voted, so 86%. Uh, so we'll we'll close that now and share the results with you. And uh, the results are people are pretty up to date these days, and that's great to see. Good news. Okay, that might help you in during your presentation, uh, Marcus. And with that, we'll move on to you. So let me turn things over to you now. We'll uh, do that uh, making you the presenter thing. You should have that screen now. And I see you. So life is good. Yeah. Now, as always with the DB Tonight Show, our questions come in. Um, our questions come in via a tool that's available to uh, you as an attendee where you get to type in your question. I, I follow the questions on the queue and I, I uh, We'll break in and at a convenient point and uh, um, ask the question to uh, Marcus to make the show a inter little interactive, but that's up to uh, uh, between Marcus and I as we go through things. So with that, uh, Marcus, please take it away. Uh, you can go for a, uh, however long you need to, but as I always warn people, the uh, lunch hour in uh, the Eastern US is about an hour and five minutes. So if you choose not to go through that or go beyond that, you might find people dropping off as they go to eat. And I'd like okay. to make sure there is a dog outside going by the house. And, uh, and unfortunately, Lily has found it. So I'll be moving myself now. Please take it away. Thank you very much. And uh, hello, everyone. And thanks for joining. I first delivered this uh, presentation on the, uh, the main stage of IDUG EMEA in Edinburgh last year, which was, it was great to go back and to have a conference face to face after uh, a couple of years. So this presentation is just a, a light hearted look at what happens to a row in DB2 on Z. And just give me a minute because I'm clicking on the wrong thing here. There we go. So we shall see what happens to a row through the eyes of Rowdy. This is Rowdy. Uh, he is a, a row in a wordsmith's new database. So we will see as he goes from raw data into a row and how he gets inserted, indexed, logged, what happens to him when he gets neighbors on the same page what happens to him when he gets updated and accessed, makes some moves, and gets affected by table version changes. We'll see his definition and his internal format and how they affect performance. And finally, the end will come and we'll see what happens when Rowdy gets deleted. And we'll discuss briefly how his life could have been different. So let's get started. Rowdy's table is designed. So Rowdy's DBA, he wants the word to be a primary key. He might like to have some random word uh, select and thinks an identity column might be a good idea. He wants um, multiple meanings for that word and maybe a quote using a word. Um, he might need notes about the origin of the word and he wants to be able to insert words and access multiple rows by the letters of the alphabet. So this is how Rowdy's table space is defined. First of all, we create the database, then we create the table space to house the table and its data. So from DB2 version 12, the default table space type is a universal table space. It's segmented and can be partitioned by growth or partitioned by range. So where are we? Here we go, seg size. And 
if you really, really wanted to, you can still create old-fashioned non-UTS table spaces, segmented or partitioned, but you must set the current application compatibility first. That has to be V12 R1M500. So if you wanted to, you could create table spaces. Uh, this would be uh, segmented. Now this is um, num parts one. So this is old style partitioned, and this is old style non-partitioned but segmented. But for default, we will use, and for this presentation, we'll use a UTS PBG partitioned by growth. DB2 stores data sets. Uh, start again. DB2 stores data in page sets. If the page set contains data records, it's called a file page set. And a file page set is the physical or internal representation of a table space. A file page set that contains lob data is called, guess what, a lob page set. If, however, it contains index entries, it's called an index page set, and that's the physical representation of an index space. A page set is a collection of one or more data sets that are logically concatenated to form a linear addressing range. And DB2 data sets are defined as VSAM linear data sets. Each segment contains the same number of pages, so they could be in multiples of four, from four to 64. The segments are chained together and they, they provide performance and locking benefits. The data sets in the page contain pages that can be 4, 8, 16 or 32K in size. And as I mentioned before, we can have partitioned or non-partitioned, segmented, non-segmented, compressed or uncompressed. So, what's in a page? We have header pages, space map pages, data pages, and system pages. In an index, we've got headers, space maps, non leaf pages, directory pages, root pages, and leaf pages. So, a page set for a table space that has undergone alters will have system pages. If you haven't altered it, you don't get them. In a segmented table space, system pages are in a dedicated are in dedicated system segments with their own space map pages. Lob and XML page sets have other types of pages, and we shan't go into those in this presentation. I want to keep it simple. So, a header page, header football, get it. <laughs> Uh, they have a one byte page trailer for a six byte RBA, an LRSN format, and they have a 20 byte page trailer for the new 10 byte LRS, uh, RBA and LRSN formats. The page header fields contain control information that DB2 uses. So we will be looking at page trailers that are 10 bytes in length. Sorry, um, 20 bytes in length for 10 byte LRSNs. Here's a space map. A space map page identifies the data pages that have enough free space for more or for more data to be inserted. Each space map page in a page set contains a specific range of pages. The size of the range is computed based on the type of the page set, like segmented, non-segmented, partitioned, lob, index, that kind of thing. Um, also, whether the page has got the member cluster attribute affects the uh, size of the range. Non-segmented and partitioned file page sets, the space map pages are almost identical, so there's no need to worry there. 
uh, this is what a file page data set look file page set data page looks like so um, what have we have what do we have in these contents we have the page header which is 20 bytes we have the actual records and with each record you have a record header and the record data um, the records are defined either by the user or by DB2, which can be part of the user's data or part of the DB2 catalog and directory. Um, you have overflow records and pointer records. I didn't mean to do that. Um, you have contiguous free space. You have ID map at the bottom and a page trailer. So let's have a look at what happens when we create the table. So this is what the table looks like. Uh, we've got the word that we want to store, just and that's a uh, not null primary key. Um, we've got some bar charts here with the different definitions for the word. Here's our um, small int default generated by default as identity. Uh, we have a quote, um, the date of the quote, and notes about the origin of the word, you know, where that word comes from. We've got a unique index, and we've also got an index on the code. So Rody climbs into the database. Everybody's seen um, an index uh, insert statement before. And this is what it looks like. So our value is Rowdy, so that's his name. Um, a definition, and we don't know where it comes from. So as he is the first row inserted into the empty table, he will be the first row on page six. Now, why page six? Well, page zero is the header page. Page one is the segmented space map page. Page two is the system page. And there are a whole bunch of other pages until we get to page six. I'll show you page six in a minute. Let's have a look at the index page first. So the index pages identify the rows by representing them in two byte entries beginning for row one, which is row D's ID, 20 bytes from the end of the page. So here. So the index for Rowdy is at 3E. And Rowdy's data on this index includes his word value, which is here. Oops. And the value used to locate his page here, which is uh, page six, row one. So the red is the key. So all of these spaces, so it's rowdy followed by spaces. And the green is where it is located in the data. So that's page six, row one. So let's have a look at the data page. These identify the rows by representing them in two byte entries, beginning 20 bytes from the end of the page. So offset one, four. Now all of these values are hex, remember. The first, uh, this is the entry where Rowdy begins. Oops. So here's Rowdy's key. So it says offset 14. So years offset 14 begins there. Um, the last byte of the page is the parity byte. Uh, so this is the first entry. So for offset 14, which points us to here, which is the beginning of Rowdy. That's the key. 
R O W D Y, and then spaces, that's hex four zeros, and there's the rest of the data. Here's a formatted version of the data page. So as you can see, uh, the offset for row one is at 14 or 14, so offset 14, and this is uh, the text representation of the inserted row. The log RBA of the inserted row is here. This will be quite useful and important later on. What else happens when you insert a row into a table? Rody appears on the log. And this is the insert log record for the table space data page. There are log records associated with the index updates as well, but we won't look at those now. So here, this is the RBA of the insert, that one. It's also the PG log RBA of the page being updated, which was in the previous uh, uh, previous slide. This log RBA represents the last activity, whether it's insert, update, delete, page compaction, etc. Um, the PG log RBA is used by copy and recovery utilities, as well as various log scanning tools. So this is the row header, six bytes, which contain uh, a byte of flags, half word length, half word OBID. The last byte is usually the row ID, which is one. Here we go. Uh, that can be used to find the corresponding PG map entry at the bottom of the page to locate the offset into the page where the row resides. So in version 8.1, versioning was introduced and this could impact this and the last byte could reflect uh, that versioning could impact uh, where the, the offset of where the row resides and the last byte could reflect the version of the row instead of the row ID. So that's something to be aware of. Uh, there is a bit in the flags, normally the first byte of the row header, and that indicates what this byte represents. So we shall have a look at that later on. So the first eight bytes prior to the row header is the DM segment header. And byte three, so here we go. Byte three is also, and so far always, the row ID. Ooh. And here's a list of all of the log operations uh, performed on the database and the table space. So you can see um, DB2 acquires locks, it uh, formats the root page, formats the uh, header and space map page, more locks, different subtype, yada 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 more pages so page zero is the header page space map page system page oh sorry and uh my laptop slowing down so you have the pages are formatted finally page six is allocated here we go page six uh, and the space map page is updated. Then we insert the data in a page. There it is. We also insert a record, uh, update the update the index with the new um, row. And that's the index. So let's see what happens when more rows are inserted and the page starts to fill up. So use royal. I picked another word which is close to rowdy in the alphabet. Uh, use boondoggle, which doesn't begin with R-O. So let's see what happens to him. 
and we've also got Rover. So let's have a look at the space map page now. So we can see how it's grown after we've uh, inserted many more rows. The number of rows in the ID map matches the PG max value of 17 or decimal 23. So there you go. So there are 17 rows or 23 rows. The PG max is underlined at offset 12 there in the header portion of the page. See 17. This page contains potentially one hex 17 or 23 in decimal rows. There could be holes in the page due to row overflows or deletes. So this byte is the architectural limit as to why the maximum number of rows is on, on a single page is 255. So here's Rowdy, that's his key. Here's Royal, and here's Boondoggle. These are the uh, the keys in hex. The PG map at the bottom of the page. Here, each half word entry is the offset to that row ID. There we go. So let's give Rowdy a makeover and update one of the columns. This update to Rowdy will increase his length and move him to a different location on the page, but will not yet cause an overflow. So let's find him some space. This was the end of the page, but now as you can see, we've got a lot more data, a lot more, a lot, many more rows. Now he's pointing to a different page. Rowdy's location, 01 location, has changed from 014 to uh, FE3, EF3 even more interesting that the page was squeezed to consolidate free space to allow for this row to fit in its home page. Row two is now located at 14 or 14. This indicates there is no implied order to the rows on a given page. Row one does not have to be the first row. The PG map allows us to find the correct offset for the corresponding rows, sorry. Page compaction log records were introduced in version seven and eight of DB2. These records reflect that a squeeze has occurred. So Rowdy is still there in its original position at offset one four, but as the row pointer has changed to zero F zero two, let's go back if my laptop will wake up 0f02 so that's where Rowdy's current posi new position is because that's where Rowdy is this data where he used to be is inaccessible so let's add some new columns to the table we're adding a quote source of varchar 100 and the number of references that we can find for that word in small int. One thing to note here, in DB2 version 8, this would not version the row, but with reordered row format in DB2 v9, the addition of a fixed length column to a row, which is variable columns, will, will cause versioning. Once a page update, an insert update or delete is performed, a system page is added to the page set. There we go. 
and use a system page. So the first page is four, the last page of data page is five. Page six, and use the data, the, uh, the ID map. So, whoops, what's happened here? Update DBA words, set quote to this, and the meaning to that, and oh, where's the qualifier? Where's the predicate? There is no predicate, he's just updated 470 rows. Whoops. So, he forgot the where clause, uh, and he considered just setting the columns to null without a where clause, but some words already had meanings, so that would just make things worse. So he used his favorite log tool to generate updates to put things right. However, all of this expanding of rows and contracting them again had put internal formats into disarray, even though the unintentional changes were corrected. So Remember, we discussed the row header a little earlier. If the correct bits are switched on, instead of being a row header, it's now a pointer record directing DB2 to the new location of the actual data. But the index stays the same, pointing to page six. But when the page is read, DB2 recognizes the pointer and will read the reference page to get the row. So you can see the pointers will cause additional I.O. activity to retrieve the data. This is your overflow record. And this is the new pointer to page seven and row five. So that is where row, or the first row, row one, has now moved to. It's not on page six, row one anymore. It's on page seven and row five. So using the fifth page map offset, we find Rowdy. Uh, and here is the same data, but in a formatted version. So DB2 is smart about not allowing multiple pointers for a single row. If a subsequent update would cause Rowdy to overflow from page six to seven, DB2 DB2 deletes the page six reference, inserts the updated row into page seven, and updates the home page pointer to page seven instead of page six. The insert and delete are logged with a bit indicating that they were caused by an update statement. If it can underflow back to the home page, DB2 will do that as well. So it's uh, pretty smart. So Rowdy hopes reorg, a reorg can reunite him with his friends, Royal and Rover. If you did a reorg log yes, each page format would appear in the DB2 log as well. So the reorg has brought Rowdy, Rover, and Ryle together back on the same page. And there we go. So here's our um, pointers in the space map page. Going up there, and that's uh, right, Rowdy. Not all available pages were used. So changes in the free page and percent free values will increase the amount of free space on a freshly loaded or reorged table space to allow for growth in clustering order. 
So the free page one option on the create table space finally takes effect after the reorg. So page seven was not used and Rover, Rowdy and Royal find themselves on page eight. So let's make some more changes to Rowdy's table. And we're changing the, we're altering the columns and changing the data set type to varchar 250. So say the DBA has had some experience for using his table. Uh, he decides that the mean in columns need to be longer and the number of interest is so high that the number of references column in the column must be increased in size. So the alter varchar does not cause versioning, but the change at the size of num references does. So if we insert this new row, rough, into the table after we've done the versioning alter, and we've populated all of the columns, and some of them are quite long, rough doesn't look the same. This is an example of versioning. So an increase uh, in size of a fixed length column, in this case from a two byte small int to a four byte integer, that's introduced a new version to map records. So the flag bit indicates that this is a version row and that what was originally the row ID byte instead indicates the version of the row. And just a reminder that the log record still contains the real row ID allowing for recovery and for log utilities to function properly. Actually, we could possibly gain more than just one page. When a space is versioned, additional system pages are created to store versions of the DBD which contain the older version row formats to allow for later normalization to the current version. That's uh, instantiated by reorg. So information in the header page on page zero point to and contain information about the system pages. So here zero two isn't an ID in this case. So what is it? It's, it points to a version, version data. So the version data actually works. So there we go, we're doing a select. But versioning renders older versions to the current version and that requires, sorry, rendering older versions to the current version requires more CPU. Uh, altering an index column forces a rebuild of the index. Updating many rows in older versions can cause overflow. So if you do alter your table and DB2 is applying versioning, then you must reorg as soon as possible. Otherwise, you will be incurring a lot more CPU and possibly IO. The reorg will also remove the system pages that are not necessary if all of the rows are at the current version. But the row headers will remain with the version number in the row ID byte going forward. So what happens when Rowdy gets deleted? Scraps of him may be in the database. He'll still be on the log and he'll still be in old image copies. So as the table space is UTS and uh, page ID free is zero, where is that gone? PD rack, this and this one, that's this little flag there. This tells us that it's a pseudo delete and the row is not turned into, the ho into a hole and the PG map entry is not freed. So the record is marked as pseudo deleted PD. 
and the page map entry is still there. But the broken bit is turned on, so that's not a zero, it's an eight. So the data is there, it's just inaccessible. The data will remain until the space is claimed by other DM activity, such as insert or an update or a reorg. If a reorg occurs, the space is then reclaimed. Old images of Rowdy still exist on image copies prior to the, to the delete as well, so long as the space isn't reclaimed. So in addition to the physically logged delete of the rows, there's an index and space map maintenance which occurs with the delete. So we've looked at the DSM1 log P print of the insert log record for Rodi earlier in the presentation. So this is the delete, delete in the data page, that is also logged and could be reversed using a log tool or manually deciphered if you are so inclined. If this was an overflow row, the homepage pointer row delete would also be logged. So how could Rowdy's life been a little different? Um, we'll talk about altering of, we've uh, talked about altering of columns, row versioning, what about compression or encryption? Or reordered row format? Or ASCII and Unicode tables? Uh, we won't cover non-padded indexes or compressed indexes. So when varchars are expanded later or columns are added, rows grow and may move off the original page and can actually take an extra read page ex uh, to get a single row. Reorg or design changes can avoid this to some degree by avoiding varchars or avoiding adding columns later or reorg after adding them straight away. Versioning to increase column sizes has the same issues, plus conversion overhead during retrieval. Certain alters which did not version a row in version 8 will now induce versioning due to reordered row format that was introduced in v9. And an example of versioning discussed in the main flow of the presentation earlier. So let's change some space parameters. Uh, free page and percent free are only honored on a reorg or a load. So if you insert rows, so if you only insert rows, then the order of the inserts and not the clustering key will determine the order. But if you happen to insert in clustering order, reorg may actually cause more pages to be involved in a query for a selection of rows. And the setting of the free parameters is dependent upon the DML activity expected for each table. So you need to work out what's the nature of the inserts in relation to the clustering key. Are they random? Do you need higher freeze? Only increasing inserts with the space growing at the end, you need lower freeze. Do you expect updates which will significantly change row sizes? Uh, are your deletes expected to create holes? So intelligent setting of free page and percent free uh, is needed to reorg. So let's have a look at compression. If Rowdy and his friends are compressed, then it will be harder to read many images of the rows on logs, spaces, and copies. Um, the variable nature of the compressed results might cause more overflow more rows would probably fit on a page, reducing the number of pages read for certain queries, but possibly causing more problems due, due, due to locking. There are many effects when a space is defined with compression. One is that the data, uh, the rows leave on VSAM files and the logs is far less readable. So that's data security, but not the best. 
there are advantages of squeezing more rows on a page, which allows, for example, one letter of the alphabet to fit into a buffer pool with fewer IOs. The data would also take up less space on external media or on DASD. Uh, compressed rows, by definition, are variable, even if no VAR chars are defined. Compression only takes effect on reorg and load replace. The space contains a dictionary created by these utilities, so that adds IO, it also adds uh, in the size of the data set. Once compression is defined and the reorg or load is executed, then inserted and updated rows will be compressed using the dictionary. Index keys are not in a compressed format prior to V9. V9 does allow for index compression, but it's different from table space compression. It's done at the page level instead of the row level. And uh, I've got another presentation which covers that. Uh, remember that the pages are limited by PG Max ID to FF, which is one byte, or 255 rows per page. This is regardless of the page size. So if your 255 rows use less space than the page size, you have unused space, an unusable space in your database. So it, you have to be wise when you're allocating page size and using compression and row length. It's a fine balance. You don't want to waste space. Uh, additional encryption is possible, um, particularly for image copies destined for off-site transport. DB2 has got native encryption capabilities. Uh, we've got hardware and software solutions available, and now on the Z16 or Z16, uh, we've got an onboard encryption uh, chip, which does all the work for you. So. Let's have a look at Rowdy as a non-compressed row. So on a version eight system, after all of the test activity, DDL, SQL, and ultimately a reorg, we find that he's living on page uh, one, two. There were 12 or one, one, two rows on the page or 18 decimal rows on the page. Uh, the length was E8, decimal 232. Uh, it's version one. And the character data is readable. So this is Rowdy after I did an alter table space compress yes and executed another reorg. The reorg, the rows were already in the same order. So all this reorg should have done was compress the data. So Rowdy moved from uh, page two one to 15 or one five, 11 pages earlier in the database. And the rows per page jumped from 18 to 255. So this would reduce IO, but the cost, because there's no such thing as a free lunch, the cost is in a CPU cycle somewhere to decompress the row. So there are E1 or 255, 225, sorry, rows on the page. Uh, the length is 4A which is 158 bytes less than the non-compressed row. Uh, yeah, sorry, that was compression. So let's have a look at reordered row format. So basic row format was the only option available prior to, v, uh, prior to DB2 version nine. Columns appear in a logical order, column one, two, et cetera. And the length attributes of variable columns were included with the column. So if the variable length attributes includes one for a null byte, if the column is nullable, so a variable, so sorry, so a nullable varchar of 30, 
uh, which is the maximum length, would have a length attribute of 3.1 or 1f in, uh, in hex. So numeric columns, uh, where are we? Numeric column types are encoded on DB2 pages to allow for correct sort ordering. They must be decoded to ZOS format for usability if you are deciphering a row. Date, time, and timestamp are also in pack decimal type format without a sign nibble. Again, that, that must be accounted for if you're directly processing a row. And the encoding methodolo methodology is discussed in uh, DB2 manuals and red books. So let's have a look at a basic row format. So the fixed columns are in blue, bolded and italicized. So these are your fixed columns, the rest of our charts. Basic row format is in logical column order. Uh, you have the null byte, zero, zero is not null, FF is null. The column name appears at the beginning of the column data after its corresponding null byte. Uh, meaning three appears above and before its physical location because it was null and it could be barely fitted in. So let's see how it looks reordered row format. So we have this, the fixed columns are together and the variable columns are together afterwards. So this is Rowdy's reordered row. It's the same length there. All fixed columns appear first in the Colno order. Each off offset relates to each var varchar column which follows their colno order the offset is from the beginning of the actual data not from the row header uh, variable lengths are calculated by using the next offset which is the next offset minus my current offset uh, the last variable column length is calculated by using the row header length as the terminating point so row header minus the offset uh, this adds efficiency. So if you want to select quote source, DB2 can index right to it by using the correct offset versus having to traverse the entire row. So there are performance implications to uh, reordered row format. Um, I'm not going to look at lob and XML columns. Um, it's no longer just the base table. There's additional space per lob XML column per part. Uh, index, additional indexes for auxiliary parts. There's additional columns in the base table to reference the object in the auxiliary table space. Uh, there's more logging implied in creating lob and XML columns, even if you've got log no on your auxiliary to, uh, auxiliary objects. Um, there's more IO to fetch a single row. Uh, the utilities need to consider all related spaces, not just your, uh, your base uh, space, but your uh, auxiliary spaces. And there are also high level and low level space map pages and there are loads of other different types of pages, not just your system, um, space map, data page, header page, there's more for LOB than XML. So that, that's all available for your uh, delectation and delight to read in the uh, DB2 manuals. So what happens if we create the Rowdy's, uh, Rowdy's table uh, word as ASCII or Unicode, because so far they've all been on uh, EBCDIC. 
So there's no physical difference, just character code points change. Each basic Latin character set for Unicode is the same as ASCII. Um, the encoding scheme is different. Uh, the char and bar char data would be represented in the appropriate CCS IDs. Beware, the sort sequence is different from EBCDIC to ASCII and Unicode. EBCDIC is lowercase, uppercase, numeric. ASCII and Unicode is numeric, uppercase, and lowercase. So, Rowdy, from EBCDIC 9996A6848 in ASCII becomes 72657764479. So extended RBA, LRSN, and we're approaching the end. This is the finish line. So prior to extended RBA, you had, where's it gone? There you go. The last two bytes, 00, zero D5, that was the page trailer. After extended RBA, the page trailer is now 20 bytes. After you go to V11, DB211, and you perform a get using your object using extended RBA. Um, if you create after your version 11 or you load replace after version 11 or you reorg after version 11, then you will get extended RBA. You may also note that the data above is basic row format and below is reordered row format. So you get this out of the box. So let's say goodbye to Rowdy. We followed him building his home with a create table space, followed his birth, insert into table. We followed him growing up with an update, making friends with other inserts, changing circumstances with an altered table. Uh, we saw his sad departure with a delete, and we've got his full biography in the log. We have seen how his life might have, life might have been different using row formats, compression, and hopefully we learned a little about DB2 in the process. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Martin, over to you. Any questions? I'm sorry about that. Are you done? Yep, that, yeah. I'm done. I Thank you. Called, oh, thank you. I got called away. My uh, dear wife was uh, leaving to see her sister. There we are. I'll make myself a presenter, show my screen. So let me wrap up here. Uh, last question we had for people is always, is, did you learn anything today? Launch that off. Give everybody a chance to answer that. And we're getting a good result there. We'll close that and share the result. 70% uh, 7 of our audience voted and 100% said they learned something, which is always a good thing. Yay. So you did a, you did a good job. So with that, I'd like to thank you again for joining us today on the DB Tonight Show, uh, Marcus.
You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Yes, come back and see us again sometime. And uh, with that, I'm going to cue the uh, world famous uh, theme music we have and uh, turn that up. And once again, thank you profusely for doing such a good job. Appreciate it. And we will see you all next uh, month on the DB2 Night Show. Have a great weekend. Be safe. And uh, we'll see you then. Thanks all. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Marcus. Thank you.